Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your Art Sherpa, and today I'm going to show you how you can paint loose watercolor roses. Now I'm going to really break this down, and what I mean by that is we're going to talk about a couple different types of watercolor paint. We are going to talk about the techniques that are involved. We're going to have a little practice, and we are going to make sure that when you leave this, you're putting some watercolor roses down on paper, even if you're really new to watercolor painting. I'm really excited to show this to you today because this fundamental skill creates an incredible anchor in all other skills that you guys are gonna just totally love. How's it, how are you doing today, John? Good, I am doing good. I gotta good. skip ads on my own phone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the ads. It's a, it's a YouTube thing. It's a YouTube thing. And it, it is part of how we're able to yeah. support ourselves helps here. Us, helps a smidge. Helps a, the helps advertising does Mostly help. Mostly you guys help the most. The, you guys man, are the most incredible. So now, much. I can tell you from people that I've had with me for a minute, um, if moderator uh, Yellow is here, she can attest that this... This is the joy space in watercolor. This is the meditation space in watercolor. This is that first skill where you're like, oh, this is awesome. So my whole goal here is to get you really into this. Now we're gonna cover, I'm gonna use my Viviva color sheets. This is watercolor on a sheet of paper. I'm also gonna show you like a traditional pan watercolor, right? These are really just like the little pan watercolors that you might buy at the store. Just so you see that they're essentially the same, it's the same process um, and, and not gonna mess with you. I've got some cores out here. So I like Senelia acrylic, which has the honey in it. I like the core, which has the other binder in it. Um, they're just very different products, even though they're the same product and I always have both around. Uh, the Senelier acrylic is a tighter watercolor, which means the bloom is less crazy. But sometimes if you're trying to control something on your paper, not having the pigment wander all the way across every area that you wet is very helpful. So that's why we have some choices here. And I'm going to pull out a scratch piece of paper because I don't want to uh, have to pull one sheet. Now, I picked this as my scratch because on occasion, stuff happens when I'm traveling with my pads of paper that um, damage it. And this had a little damage in it and I could cut this down into clean paper or I can take advantage of these little boobos or these moments and turn this into a teachable thing. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. Does that sound good? Yeah. First thing that I want to talk to you about is, and I'll pull the core out initially. You use the Viviva if you're using that and let's wet an area. Okay, we're gonna wet an area. We're just gonna talk about the core things that we're doing. So I pre-wet an area, and I want you to kind of look at, can it show them how wet this is? Can Let's you see, see the reflection there? You can see there? a little bit there. Oh, there you go, right tilted okay. there. There you can see it just so barely. So the drop would be too wet. I want this okay. about this wet, and if I were to take some red paint here, do you see how that blooms out? Okay. That's the first concept of this. We're painting wet into wet. The other thing we're doing is kind of a drawdown. So I'm gonna take one color and I'm gonna put it here, right? It's wet, wiping off my brush and I'll get a little green. And when I come touch into the yellow, it pulls into that green. And the green can pull into the yellow. And if I bring another little color here, I'll grab I don't know, some phthalo blue. So where these connect, there's a little bit of a drawdown. So this isn't the big drawdown. I have a Pinterest pin on that, but this does that same principle. And what this is, is the paint goes where the water is, right? So if I paint this out on dry paper, it's not gonna go anywhere else. But when I meet two areas of wet, they're going to interact with each other. You can really see this. Can we zoom in on this? Right here. I want you guys to understand what's happening. Because if you understand it, then when these moments start to happen for you, you can kind of start to create them. So if you see here, each pigment gets pulled down into the decks. Now my canvas, my paper's on a tilt but this will still happen to you on a flat. If you want to exaggerate this, you can tilt up and use gravity. The first stroke 
and I'll start it right over here that we're going to practice and I want you guys to practice with me now I'm going to take my red is a small C stroke. Now I'm doing a number 14 soft aqua round. I told you guys the materials you just need a round brush. You just need a round brush. Okay, we're going to make a little curve stroke. Then we're going to make a counter curve stroke. Around it and around it and around it. Let's do that again. These are like little commas or C's. You need to practice getting a basic little curve stroke in. All the roses are built on that concept. So on your scratch piece of paper, just practice that a little bit. Get a little warmed up into the small center. This is what your center of your rose is built on. Grab some magenta here. Center of your rose will be built on these little curving strokes. Right? They get a little bigger as they come out, but you've got to be able to handle that little curve. Now the next stroke I want you guys to practice, and I'll get into my color sheets now, because I can. Because I can, and I want to, and I can, and I'll get into my peacock blue, because it's so much fun. And I'm going to come down right about here. As we come out from a rose, I've got a wetter brush. When I'm doing bigger paddles, it's still kind of a curved stroke, right? But I'm going to use more of my brush to create those, right? So it's about pulling more of a wet area down. Let's come over here and we get a little wet on here. See how I'm letting the brush make that stroke? Now I've got, again, this is on an angle, so sometimes these go down. So when we're doing these bigger petals when we come out, we're still curving these strokes, right? But they're going to be wider, and those are the open petals. Okay, now let's get some foliage green. The other thing we're going to practice is the leaf. You guys ready to leaf? The leaf is going to go, you have the point of the brush, I like to do a couple of times. Pull. Every round brush does this. Some better than others, <laughs> right? Some are better uh, leaf painters than others. Um, dagger brushes do this really well. And again, the reason that my paint is gathering so heavily at the base of that is just because there's an angle. Now the other thing that we'll do in the roses is we will sometimes get a second darker color and here, before, I'll show you, before the paper's dry, we might come in and allow a little bit of blooming out, right, of a darkness on that inside of that rose. So you'll be coming in and before they're dry, coming in and allowing some of this action to happen. Sometimes it'll happen through here, but sometimes it'll happen on the inner edge. So you'll find yourself darkening an edge or an inner side of the rose and then allowing that to settle. When it settles, that's how we get the other image that we started out with. These are your core techniques. Before you get into your next practice page, try these techniques, the touch and pull, the bigger swoops, the way that you can work wet into wet. Another technique you can practice is if I were to say get a little bit of my Persian blue here and go like that, that's quite dark, isn't it? I'm going to rinse out vigorously and get some cleaner water. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to touch. I'm going to come up with that water and touch into that blue. See what's going to happen there? Be even beyond the gravity, it's going to pull paint down into it. So having a sense of that, because your paint won't travel the same distance. Let me get another one. I'm going to get my Sennelier, which remember I said was a little tighter. Didn't travel quite as deep. So let's take, a, I'll get some of the little Sennelier red here. That's a nice, wonderful watercolor, isn't it? That's beautiful. Oh, we love the honey. And I'm going to grab maybe some, oh wait, I want to grab water. Okay, so I'm going to get some of my clean water. 
you want to see how that travels, the way that that travels in your water on your paper. Because what it is, is I'm painting Fabriano, right? I'm painting a Fabriano pad of paper, the Artistico block on a 9 by 12. It's extra white. The sizing on this is amazing. It's 100% cotton. It holds water and releases water in a consistent way. It is a joy in every single conceivable space, right? But not every paper will perform the same way. Not every paint will perform the same way. So my other point to doing this exercise with you guys is for you guys to start to learn what does my paint do? What does my paper do? Where is it strong? If your paper is pulling in the paint so quickly, it won't bleed into itself. You have the wrong sizing on that paper. You have the wrong paper for what you're doing, right? So you're gonna want specifically a watercolor paper 140 pounds. Do I have a block? I forgot to put a block out. The one thing I forget. Where would I find such a thing? Oh. In the and over there, okay. I have some closed up ones. I'm going to show you exactly what the product is so you can see it. There are other products like this. This is just my favorite. There are other good products. I they're yes, they're just 800 years old, so I trust them. Okay. So this is what I'm using. I'm using the Artistico Extra White 100% cotton, right? 300 gram, 140 pounds. So uh, pounds where you do pounds, grams where you do grams, but so it's the same. That, that, uh, that Nine by 12. And it's a block, which means all the pages are glued together except a little area that you release. So 140 pounds is how much a brick of that paper right. weighs. Or 300 grams. Right. It, mm -hmm. so, so much. it also tells you something about the thickness of the paper, too. Because they, yeah. they like, like you could make a brick of paper weigh 140 pounds, but well, it relates so to the um, number. The number of, of pages. So yes. The same number of pages in this paper weighs 140 pounds, and the same number of pages in your paper that you print on your on your paper in your home printer is 20 pounds. Give right. you an example. So that's, you know. That's what you're uh, working on. Okay. About seven times thicker. Now I'm going to take my Vivio color sheets and I've got my little water here, right? And I am going to come in. Uh, let's make a red rose. I'm going to take my cherry blossom, right? And I'm going to come in the center here. Touching and making some little curved strokes. As I come out, I press my brush harder. Right? I'm making bigger petals as I come out. I just added some water. Curving that around. Sometimes when they go kind of edgy like that, I am inclined to not alter that. Press that out here. So I've got a nice little rose that's building here. Now again, my canvas is tilted, which is why the water is accumulating on the end. I can come back with a little bit of my, like maybe my vivid red here while it's still wet. And then a couple places add some of that extra zhuzh. See how we're doing? Now where these rings, these tiny ones are facing, if they're facing directly at you and the petals are evenly spaced out this way, it'll make it feel like the rose is facing you. If I were to say, maybe I'll do a yellow rose. Let's do some happy yellow because we're happy today, right? Yeah. Let's come over here. Now I'm going to make a rose that's sort of facing over towards the left. Look at me knowing left and right today. Same beginning, isn't it? I start to widen out the petals on this side, though. They're not as wide over here. And I'm going to build more of the rows facing this way. And I've just pressed out some loose little petals there. And I can come in with my orange, which I think is fun to always add to. Yellow rose. So we can face the rows towards the left. All right, do I have any questions? Let's see if I have any questions going on. I'm going to sip my coffee and gather some questions. I was just looking over here. 
Uh, Fill up sheets of these. <laughs> yeah. No. So uh, there was something here uh, that I that I man. I, there's so many chat. There's uh, people have been really nice to see each other saying hello there's been lots and lots of socialization it is good to see everybody here at the live if you have a question put it all in caps if we don't see it the moderators will see it and they will make sure you get a link to the video okay so i'm going to ask a i question. use just on my mixed media pad and watercolor it uh, watercolored on it fine here's, okay here's i mean a... you can do that it's experimental techniques and there's so what you'll have is you'll have media people tell you the product limitations right that's their job as art material companies right you as the artist your job is to push those boundaries <laughs> so yes gesso isn't really designed for watercolor and it's maybe not an ideal binder and a watercolor ground might be archivally better but that doesn't mean that you can't do watercolor into gesso and then acrylic over that right right so uh, okay, so just, here's just just so you know, I was I was going through the, the questions earlier. And here's, it's okay. Here's the I'm sure you know, but the gist of the question. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm what is the difference pain. between watercolor in a pan, in a tube, and on a piece of paper? Okay, so there's a couple differences, um, but they're not substantial like you think. So watercolor in a pan is watercolor like what you might find into, but it is dried out and in the pan and it can be activated again later and what's nice about it is that it's very transportable i'll grab some of my orange while i'm talking about this so it's very transportable you can easily take it with you you can reactivate it again years later lots pressing down and releasing lots of youtubers uh, have done fun little videos where they've gotten 100 year old watercolor right and reactivated it. So this is reactivatable. Watercolor in the tube, which I have, comes out like tube paint um, and it's very wet. Why artists like it from the tube is if you're doing large works or you're having to heavily pigment load something, it is easier to wet out the tube. Now the tube is reactivatable even as that watercolor dries in its like, in its tray or pan or palette, whatever you have. Um, you can activate it again later and it once it dries it becomes like this and it's usable again It's only wet though or moist in the tube. I'm experimenting with some wet palette suggestions that you guys had um, To see if I can't keep the tube the tube paint wet longer For that wetting out effect and on the sheet what that is is that's the watercolor pigment on the sheet now these tend to be I think of them more as a dye for the Viviva, um, but the pearl sheets are watercolor pigment that is dried on the sheet. So instead of in the pan, it's put there and sometimes it's super loaded. It also comes in liquid. Doc Martens like this though is not watercolor. It is is more of a dye. Um, so that's just something, PH Martens. I keep always saying that so wrong. I keep make, mixing up the boots and the, I don't really use the bottle paints because that's more for advertising art. It's, it's more in common with Copic markers than you'd think. Um, but there are liquid watercolors that are absolutely watercolor pigment suspended in a liquid suspension. And then there's also powder watercolor uh, that you can get like Color Burst from Ken Oliver or Brutus Monroe. Um, that's like little powder and then you activate it. So there's a lot of presentations for watercolor. Um, that are very excited. Sometimes it's printed on the paper and you just activate it with water. Sometimes it's put into pens and you just activate it with pen. Sometimes it's put into pencils and you can use it as a pencil or activate it with water. I am so excited about this medium because it, like acrylic, comes in a lot of different ways to enjoy. It really is. Oh, it comes in sticks too. So you can like use it like a pastel and then you activate that with water or you can put it on like uh, like a sanding board and you like activate it there. You yeah. can brush right off with your paint. There's just watercolor is basically the pigment suspended in the gum Arabic binder unless you're using what was Golden's binder? Uh, I always forget it. Oh, it. Oh, gosh, you're right. I've, I've drawn. They, they use a hybrid modern binder which is yeah uh, it's like weird and food safe and not special. that you should eat paint but it's just a weird it's more archival and it's got some uh go read their thing i'm totally blanking it right now yeah, anybody I, I remember too. share it in the chat but it has a different binder but all other watercolor is made essentially in the same chemistry all right how do we like our roses so we've got these great. nice little roses we'll do one more 
right? Let's do one more. Let's do maybe a, a, a blue rose. Let's do a blue rose. I'll do a, I'll do a core blue rose. Why not? All right, so I've gotten my brush wet. Again, this is just around. I'm gonna come load my little pan. You can kind of see it there. Oh, it's blue. I know what I've got. I'm gonna load it up there. You can see it's activating. Missed your, I missed my watercolors before I use them because when they're dry, they're kind of hard to work with and I pre-sort of wet them with a mister. I'm going a little bit bigger in my little strokes here. Kind of making this more of a closed rose and then opening that out. So see how that creates that bud there? That's fun stuff. You can come get a little purple if I feel like it. Got a little purple interest here. Wet into wet. It's not a problem. Little loose flowers. You can fill up pages with these. Let's make some leaves. All right, I'm wetting out. You can hear me when you want to have, when you want to, I'll show you a big trick here. So say I load with pigment, right? And I'm gonna come here and just sort of do my leaf stroke, right? And that brush was fairly loaded with water and pigment. But let's say I want the next leaf to be super light, but not without pigment. When you hear the water swish gently, that is a way to get just a very light pigment load. See how that's like just a pink pink? So that light swish is lightening up the pigment. You can like, that's how I get like the most pastel pink ever. Vigorous swish is no pigment. So sometimes when you're watching a video, listen for that water noise because it's it can be hard to remember as a teacher to go, it's a soft swish, right? We might say something like do a soft offload or remove a little pigment or come back with a light thing. But what we're really doing is, um, I'm gonna really load up. Uh, shoo, 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 shoo. Let's get some pyro orange. We totally, so I'm loading up so much pyro orange, right? I'm making a little cluster of leaves here. But it, maybe I want less, a lighter orange, and I come here and... See how that lightened that orange, that soft rinse? And then a vigorous rinse. As long as I don't have a lot of pigment in my water, it should just give me just water. So that's a paint control thing that we can do. Let's add some green on here, and I'm going to start doing some little leaves. I think it's fun to do little leaves around our flowers. Now that's the thing that you saw me do there. See how you can kind of come in and curve them? You can lengthen them. You can join them up. But you've got to get those strokes down. That's what you're trying to do is get those strokes down in the world. I've added a, a little more pigment to that one. I've joined those two up. You know, you can do this multi-directionally. You can glaze over what you already have. Now this is semi-dry, so what will happen is it will soften here. It won't be like a hard glaze over that. Ah, oh, there we go. See, we're just filling that up. Sometimes you can come back, people want to come back with a glaze over the center, but I think the looser that you can paint these, the better off. come here and make some just little tiny marks right there in the center and I'm going to kind of offload a little bit and bring in a little bit of a bud. Do you guys see the bud forming? That's smaller isn't it? It's a little bit of a bud. I can come in with my little green Touch it right in there. I like the green to go into the flower and maybe make a little stem. 
and perhaps a little leaf off here. Let's do it again because nothing gets us better at the job than doing it again. So let's do it again. Let's make a little bud here. So this is again that tiny little curved in and tiny little curved in. We're being delicate with it. Maybe I want to be a little more down that way. Come on this little edge and a little more down that way. This bud's a little tighter, isn't it? That bud's a little more close together. Touching the edge here and I'm letting that capillary effect that we talked about at the beginning, that technique, right? Nice little stem off there. You know, maybe it has a few little kind of uh, little, little spines and stuff. leaves bigger or smaller as I see fit you can fill entire pages with just buds you could fill an entire page with these buds it's beautiful and fun it's awesome you just want to make them different directions right you need to keep doing them until they're your buddy <laughs> until the buds are your nice little pigment this is just the core watercolor I got a nice little pigment you know, maybe come down and do a little bud there and a little bud here. I could say a little little bit of it is just maybe off there. Back with the green, right? See how an entire page can fill up with these? Um, how is it going, guys? So this is, this is the skill set, right? You start, you practice, right? Have your practice pages, save damaged paper, paintings that don't work out both sides. If you swatched one, work both sides of the paper. Um, always have scratch paper around. Have days where you plan to fill pads, just fill pads with leaves and roses. Those are fun things to do, leaves and roses. Mm-hmm. They're good for you. Like like vitamins or sit-ups, but way more fun, right? And you can just keep adding little flowers. You can be like, oh, come here, little Quinn. I want you to, maybe you're downward facing rose. Now, generally, I like to turn the paper, but, you know, it's not good for the filming. <laughs> it's not good for the filming. So it can be good to come in and, you know... Practice getting them to go different directions. And fill in. I'm going to fill in some different colors of them. Oh, I love nickel azo yellow. It's one of my very favorites. So say you want two of them to be close together. And maybe they touch, right? Because they're close to each other. Right. What do you get there? Well, you get a lot of really interesting kind of connective little points where they might touch and, and maybe their paint interacts and you just paint the petals like, like there's a cluster of them and they're filling up an area. I want to wet that out a little more and take that off the paper. I can. But see, now they're all there. And I can just let those play if I can come back and wet that out a little bit. I come and just touch those little petals in. Little rose buds are always super fun to include our little sea strokes. So this is like a little cluster of little rosebuds, right? What happens when we add our nice little, I gotta get my brush rounded out. I 
I can come in and add little leaves here and there coming out. You just fill a page. <laughs> just fill your page. And then fill another page. Do we have and any questions? Could you do this with watercolor pencils? Yes, I have some. Want to see? They're yes. over there. I just got some. Hold I, on. Do you want to see them with ink tens or traditional watercolor pencils? Because I have both. All right. The top the top box down second shelf there. Honor, that's watercolor. And then I also have ink tents in stock because I, so these are the Derwent watercolor pencils. Ah, ink tents. So let's take a, what color? Maybe a blue. Two ways I would do it with watercolor pencil. Let's come up here to the upper left. All right. The first way that you might do it with a watercolor pencil. Now for this, I do want my glasses. I would use very similar principles. I come in and I would like a colored pencil. I would color out those first marks, right? And then I would start to fill out Some of my petal shapes. Just loosely coloring. You can actually be as meticulous. Like you can totally like draw rows like the other day where I did that little rose drawing tutorial on the shorts. You can totally do that. But once you have the pencil on there. Now what you do have once you get it wet there is you might have like the pencil marks, but what you can do with the pencil that you don't really do with the watercolor, um, just plain as you can come back over right on the wet paper. If you never played with this, it's, it's really rather life changing. Come back with a wet brush and blend. Yeah. It's like that. So it'll give you that same kind of Effect, you just get to play with it a little more. It's a little less one stroke and done, but it's still pretty wonderful. <laughs> right? The other way you can paint with these is that you come and you just wet the pencil with your brush. And come in and these are, it's a little lighter on the pigment on this, the blue. I might need to get one of the, that's actually not bad. It's rather pretty. All right. And then you can come back in. Look at that. And I prefer this. Just personally, I think they're both great. And there's definitely refinement of technique in both processes. But I, you know, the scratching is good and where you want it, it's terrific. But if you didn't want it, it's super annoying. Um, my two cent suggestion is um, to get a sharpener that has a jumbo pencil opener in it. Just so that you're not wasting your pencil if you're not going to hand sharpen with a razor, which most people are not. Come there and kind of shade that little bit. 
So see, we got watercolor pencils. You you answered the question. I did. Did I answer the question? You I did. feel like good. I answered the question. And the same thing. We could do some leaves though. Let me get some green. So if I wanted to do some leaves, I could do a nice little leaf where I actually drew it out in a very nice structure. And then I can take a different color. Two colors. I know. And I have those little faint leaves because I do little light leaves here. I play with little stems and leaves as well. So cool tools all the way around. It's fun to have all the stuff. Fun to have all, all the stuff. All the stuffs. All the stuff is super fun. It's what to play with. All right. Any questions about materials and things that you've seen today before I let you go? And I want to turn you loose on just filling sheets. Just filling sheets. When I did, uh, you know, the where did I put that first row? Real, real quick before you go, can okay. you sh can you show how to separate the uh, the sheet from the block? Oh yes, absolutely. Oh, well, that was simple. Well, this one is particularly easy. If it's that. not Just that easy, um, no. then you, you can use an artist knife. Or show, a knife. show them the little magic place where you can stick the knife in, because each block has a spe special place, so, and you have to kind of feel around for it. It's, it's like yeah, sometimes this it's side in the won't middle. do this. That side is glued, but this side is not. Yeah, and sometimes it's like in the middle of the block on one edge, and you. So the best in. thing is just fill sheets. Just go through, and just fill a sheet. Right? With all the roses, as many as you can try, as many as you can think of, pull up, right? Uh, pictures of roses, bouquets of roses, all the roses that you can think of, pull them up. You can see, you can come in. I did a bunch of like touching with like purple and blend through, play with the different colors. I think in this, I love the purple rose and I really love the like the pink where I worked with the, with the, uh, cherry blossom and the vivid red I like that a lot and I liked my blue violet in here just a ton just personally so like when I go back and do things I'm probably gonna work with my blue violet and and that but this actually was a mix of my violet and then I mixed it with my um uh vivid red and then I got this really kind of cool burgundy and I worked it into the green which was just a lot of fun for me so play time my number one tip to you is if you want to become better at whatever you're doing in art Playtime is as important as work time. In fact, I think because playtime has less pressure, we're not placing crazy like objectives in front of ourselves or pressure on ourselves because we're just discovering and being open-minded and kind of not trying to control everything in the way that we might in a finished work where we're trying to make it look like flowers in a vase, right? That's a very specific goal. But just saying, I'm gonna practice leaf strokes and I'm gonna practice roses and I'm gonna fill up pages of it and some of these are gonna be buds and what if I did it in a different color or what if I got my colored pencils involved, right? Because like I could, before I go, I'll just show you this. And I know we should go, but I, I'll just show you this before I go. I'm gonna get my uh, little vivid red here. Making a little vivid red rose, right? Because they're so fun. I'm not gonna go, I want, I want this to sort of be tucked in front of my yellow. So see, I'm also getting to practice how I place objects. So I've got this here. What if I wanted to take some purple and put it in the center? I can do that this way as well. You can go over traditional watercolor with your colored pencils.
working white on the wet paper. So they're very interactive. You can lay, that's just maybe something you wouldn't know that you could get your colored pencils involved in that way. And as the paper is wet, and then if you want to blend, you know already that you can come back through and activate that and activate that and activate that. Better paper does help the performance of these materials, the media. Paper, I would say, is the first big investment, you know. Did you guys like that? So see, you can layer. Play. Get the stuff out here and play and see. Do some roses and then do salt technique. You know, see what happens when you tip the pad, uh, you know, uh, if you dry brush it, you know, a dry brush rose, that's where you don't have such a wet uh, application of paint. I know I'm going on and on and on, but like, so say here I wanted to like dry brush it. I don't go maybe get as much water on my brush. See how the paper is showing through right and you might not take that risk of playing with this idea of dry brushing them it's a different look isn't it it's a little romantic it's it's a little like a dream Right? But knowing that you have this in your pocket and that in your pocket and this in your pocket, that's important. So number one thing you can do to get better at your painting is always paint, but take time to play with your materials. Uh, I did a thing for Lifebook, which was everything but the kitchen sink, where you got all the stuff out that you purchased speculatively and use it <laughs> so that it doesn't just sit on your shelves. Um, get the stuff out that you bought speculatively and see it works in there. Take time in your week, dedicate a day at least, I would say more, but a day at least to use the stuff that you purchased to goof around with and work on your core techniques. All right. Oh my goodness. Somebody has to call the police. That's crazy. Now, you want to show me yours? The Art Trip official group on Facebook. Come by. Uh, let us know. Um, you know, that you're doing your rose practice and put the video link in there because um, we have a rule like it's got to be my tutorials except uh, like uh, in the tutorial Tuesday pin post, which is a whole weird thing. So, so we don't make the moderators crazy who already had to memorize 2,000 original art lessons. <laughs> like, put a link in to the video. That will just help. That's just my tip. Um, unless you do exactly this and then they'll know. They're like, oh, that's, I recognize that. Um, so, you know, be sure you put the link to the video that you're, that, that's referencing it and come by and share it there. I'm on Pinterest. I'm on TikTok. This is, this would be great for TikTok. Do some of these for TikTok and release them if you're there. Do some of these for Instagram. Make a little, make a little reel. You can do that. Make a little reel of roses. And then tag me in. Be like, I made a reel of roses. Are you going to tag me in? I'm going to be saying that all day. Okay. So I've played and you've played and we played together. You know what you're going to do next. Uh, next week, we're going to do a really fun and super simple landscape that you're going to love. I want you guys to do a couple of things. I want you to be good to yourselves and I'd like you to be good to each other. And we'll see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.